Hello and welcome to the Churros e Tacticas podcast. This is your host, Keon Sobani. Diego is looking at me on the video. He's kind of disappointed with my intro. Like, what do you want? I got to say. <laughs> you saw that. I purposely. You saw that. Of course I did. I purposely <laughs> have to not make it that exciting every week so that when I'm actually excited, I have to. I can, I can take it a notch higher. If I max out every week. It just, then you can't go one one level higher when you actually when it counts right in the clutch. So I gotta save my. Yo, I'm blushing for... a little. Bit. I forgot that I had my camera on. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was weak. That was weak sauce. I was my least. I have strategically weak. Um, we just spent about five minutes off air talking about showers and how much I shower, how much Diego showers. So we should have saved that for the podcast, but. Um, we have, I guess we'll squeeze in some other talking points. The shower topic would have been good for this segment because there's not a whole lot to discuss, partly because this is, this is the Churros y Barcelona podcast and they haven't played this weekend. They played tonight. <laughs> um, so we can discuss that at a future date, probably on, on Friday, but so much will pass from Monday to Friday that I don't, we'll even remember what happens in the Barca game tonight. Um, anyways, enough rifting from me. Diego Lorin is here. Diego, how you doing? <laughs> What's up, my man? Good, dude. Good. Um, I mean, you're saying not a whole lot to talk about, but we were listing all the points that we want to touch, and we've got Spanish national team. We've got the hazard injury. We've got Zizou talking about the possible return of Cristiano. We've got the Sevilla derby. We've got, uh, you say no Barca news, but there's always news in Barca news, and, 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 and then some. So we do have our topics uh, lined up for us today. So I say we jump in head first because, uh, yeah, we got to kind of blitz through this one. It's an awkward day. Uh, jam-packed schedule for both you and I and uh, I just came to realize that in fact we are just on a five hour time difference you'd think after five, th- five years three years of recording together that I would be uh, up to date with that but uh, that was for some reason surprising to me that it's only five hours I thought oh, it was that we were on, on at least six or more seven I thought so it's actually we had a time change yesterday so it's four hours now mm. and so this is always Holy confusing shit. This is always confusing to me, especially because basically everyone I operate with, uh, uh, everyone I work with operates on uh, on the Eastern time zone. And I'm actually mm. Atlantic. So when I schedule things, it's always Eastern time zone. I'm one hour ahead of Eastern. So I'm always talking about people in Eastern and then scheduling it in Eastern time zone, even though it's not my time zone. And then, you know, you know me, right? You know how bad I am with time zones and calculating the difference and stuff, even though I know (laughs) I I still get it wrong. So then today I was kind of sweating because I have two podcasts today and I had to factor the time difference and the time change. And then so I was like really worried that I I would ultimately get it wrong and I would show up at the wrong time on Skype. But I'm glad it worked out. So, um, yeah, we did it. Yeah, we did it. You know what's funny about the hazard injury? No, it's not funny. Sorry. Um. It's actually really sad and tragic. <laughs> what is funny? It's uh, it's actually yeah. very tragic at this point. It's sad. It's not even there's no there's no joke to be made. It's just this is terrible. It's bad. It's been a bad transfer. I was wrong about this. People like I remember when this kind of the injuries first started when he first signed for us. They were asking me like, "Is this the next Kaka?" I was like, "No way. You can't compare. Like, let's, let's see how this plays out." Kaka wasn't Kaka in his last season at Milan already had injury issues. Hazard really wasn't on that level. Like, this is totally different. This has been a nightmare, though, and uh, yeah, I don't know. He just, he's, it's been a disaster. And you know what's, yeah. what the ironic thing is? Like, the joke we used to make was, like, fuck Mounier, because he's the one. It all started with his challenge against against us when we played PSG, when Real Madrid were flying, and it was Hazard, and Isco, and Marcelo, Benzema. They were combining so well on the left side, toying with PSG. We're like, all right, this is, we got something here. This, something is brewing here. And then Munier came in, yeah. fucked up Hazard. Hazard hasn't really played since consistently. But now it's not even the same injury. The, it's not the Munier injury anymore. It's a totally different thing. So this is a. It's not. Yeah. It's not a it's, relapse it's, of the same injury. Um, yeah. So this. I mean, is, every time yeah. I feel like every time when he gets injured, I learn of a new muscle group. I'd never heard of this one before. What it's was like this one? Psoas, psoas, or something. P S O A. Excuse me, P S O A S, yes, something like that, at least in Spanish. It's the so ass. Okay. So ass. His the... so ass. His sore ass. His so ass. He's got a sore. 
the psoas. I'm gonna go Sorry. with psoas I, or psoas or something. I think it's psoas. Um, each mm. each of a pair was of was that large, spelling correct? In I don't know what it is in Spanish, but in English it's p s o a s. So is that what you said? Yes, that's what I said. Okay, so it is according to Google, each of a pair of large muscles which run from the lumbar spine <coughs> through the groin on either side and with the ilacus flex the hip. A second muscle, the psoas minor, had a sim- I don't know why I'm reading this. This means nothing to me. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> but it's, it's like the groin-ish kind of mm-hmm. area, I think. Right, right, right. That area. Well, it's, it's it, listen, man. It, it is, you're looking at the numbers... Um, the fact that he's only managed to play 14 games this season, it's, um, you know, it's, it's needless to say, is worse than Dembele, I think, at this point. I think everybody would agree. Um, the quote that really stood out to me from Zizou's press conference, though, was when he talked about, you know, I, I, I think we'll see Hazard's best, but I don't know if it will be with me on the bench. That kind of, you know, stood out. It almost seemed like he digressed from one topic and just jumped into another one uh another hot topic these days of course you know the will be taking over zizu topic yeah. uh, weekly one but um but yeah that that one for me and, and again these are just you know quotes like uh, uh headlines really that that jumped out at me i didn't follow the press conference or anything but uh, he did say something that that something was up with hazard right like something's happening and they can't really put a finger to it yeah so um it's funny because of like th- three days ago, I don't know if this. Mm-hmm. I think this was must have been before the Elche game. He was asked about Hazard, and he said um, he he said he had that quote where he was like, it, "We have to endure and we have to be patient with him." But when he plays, when he he actually gets back, he's gonna play like a motherfucker. That's what he said, and that was okay. like one of the headline quotes from that press conference. And now, a few days later. Um, totally different tone. I think it's like a dejected tone. Like, you know, I obviously nobody has Zidane. Like, this is not easy for any of these guys. And, you know, Hazard himself, I'm, yeah. I'm sure, is going through hell right now. Like, with all yeah. of this, right? No doubt. No um, doubt. So, you know, other interesting things, I guess, where he was also asked about the medical department. And he said, I don't think there's a problem. We have very competent people here who are close to the players every day. And we are trying to find out what is happening with the injured players. There are things that happen in football. We have spoken about the preseason, about the number of games and things up here in the head as well, which influences it a lot. Eden had not had much luck since he arrived in Madrid. And, um, and yeah, so. What do you do at this point, Kian, if you're Florentino Perez? Do you count your losses and try to sell them off over the summer to make room for younger, healthier players? Or do you try to stick it out one more year? I think if you have a buyer, you you take that. You take that. But I don't think there is a buyer. That's the problem. Right. Can you right. name of one team that could afford him that would need him? I can't. I mean, I, I don't know what what is his what what wage is he on? I, mean, I would imagine ten plus, right? Ten, twelve, maybe. Um, or eight is it eight? I don't know. I have to look at. It. I'll look it up in a sec. He's on thirteen million euros, and mm. that's basically not that far away from like a Gareth Bale type player. So it's a lot. Um, yeah. So, but but that's the money thing is one thing, but also who mm. needs him? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. think of anyone who'd be like, oh, we desperately need this guy. Like, aside the fact that no team should even think about this. Because um, we, you know, the, it's a it's a huge risk either way. Even if he, if if he was still like, even if he was, um, if he was needed, it's still a risk because of his of his track record in the last couple of years. But I just can't think of like any big team that actually needs a, a winger, especially someone to play on the left. I really can't. Like there, are, I saw some Chelsea fans on on the Twitter timeline today getting excited about let's bring Hazard back, but that's just pure nostalgia and <laughs> and yeah, emotion sure. speaking there, and not probably not logic. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a tough one. It's a good question. I think if you find someone, you take it. But I don't I don't know if you can find someone, which means they probably have to ride it ride it through. It's going to be quite a summer. I was just watching um, again, going through the papers before uh, pressing record and uh, speaking with you here on churros. Tacticas, 
and uh, came across something that Pedro was talking about uh, with regards to the summer. He said it's going to be a very exciting and joyful summer for Madridistas. Oh, and so um, excited. Wow. Couldn't, 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 couldn't quite understand from what angle he was approaching this from, whether it is the return of Bale and, and, and company <laughs> or... Uh, <laughs> Or what? I mean, like, what? What is in store? It's, it's. I feel, and and this goes for Barca as well. I feel like so much has to be fixed before we can seriously talk about newcomers, like new new players coming in, and um, and you know, we're just talking about Hazard now. Like the, the difficulty of being to offload players like him, players like Felipe Coutinho, even Antoine Griezmann for that matter. Although of those three, obviously he would be the easiest sale. Um, but, you know, before we can talk about players coming in, how do you deal with the momentous problems of players earning ginormous wages that cost even just an unthinkable amount of money um, before, you know, lighting off the firecrackers and saying, this summer, baby, we're going to pop it off because guess who's coming to town? I mean, you know, it beats me what he's talking about. I have a vague inclination, obviously, the, the the sorts of hopium he's trying to sell. But I think for good reason he didn't name any names because he's probably also aware that uh, that a lot of things need to be sorted out before any players will come in. So those guys, and I don't look. I hate I. I just may be calling it for what it is. Those guys are like this is. From what I know and I from what I understand, they're just they're just receiving texts from Florentino and the club and they'll just mm. put out whatever they're told, right? So right. with somebody with one of those guys, it's always like, Okay, every game it has we have to push the agenda of that Real Madrid getting fucked by the referee every week. So we have to push that agenda as something as soon as something happens on Twitter. Another one is mm-hmm. talking about like, okay, I think to me it's a lot of like distractions. Let's just distract people for now. Let's get people excited about something. Sure. What actually happens is 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 obviously much different, and reality is much different. Is it possible that something exciting happens? Sure, I possibly. You know, if there's anyone who can figure it out from a financial perspective and put together some miracles and sign some some upgrades, it's probably Florentino. But even like I get right. surprised like sometimes when I see these the links to some of these players like even Barcelona I I saw a link that maybe Sergio Aguero might go there this summer yeah and uh, yeah. and I saw some Barcelona fans getting excited about that and you know saying like okay well if we miss out on Holland this would be a good plan oh. B um, mm. then I'm just like I I just feel like <laughs> ultimately I don't I don't. We, none of us really know what's going to happen this summer, but we know the situation. So we like the the financial books are public. Like some people say, like we don't really know the financial situation. Yes, we do. Like those are, those aren't exactly private. Like we can see all that stuff. It's not it's not looking great for almost anyone, especially Real Madrid, or Barcelona, especially Barcelona. Um, but uh, but someone like Aguero actually might make sense because his contract actually expires this summer. That's, all all that's the players the that are currently linked, yeah, Kian. All the, all those players that are currently linked with the club, your you know your Garcias, your uh, Arueros, um, who else is uh, uh, being talked about in the papers? Um, uh, shit, there was a whole I, I mean, mean section dedicated one. the other day. Alaba is another one. Although, yeah, I just have my doubts with him given his his you know ridiculous demands. So I didn't take that one all too serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, but two or three other players, and the, all of those mentioned. In fact, uh, our friend uh, Phil, Phil Kittrell, um, he on Twitter mentioned uh, made a mention to you know the front pages of the Catalan newspaper, sport newspapers, uh, with re- uh, with regards to these players and all of those players except for Haaland, who also made the cover, would come free. Yeah, free obviously, uh, meaning no transfer fee. There would be some sort of buying bonus that these players and their agents gets uh, get when they uh, come without a transfer fee. But yeah, uh, yeah. that's why it's not actually ever yes. free. I mean, so right. like I have a quick list here. It's like it's just a few names that Gold uh, put together of of kind of marquee players who are out of contract this summer. Aguero, Alaba, Juan Bernat, Jerome Boateng, Hakan Chalanaglu, Edison Cavani, mm. Memphis Depay, Angel Di Maria, Julian oh, Draxler, Depay wasn't, of course. Mm. Uh, Donnarumma, mm. Eric Garcia, David Luiz, Musa Marega, Juan Mata, Lionel Messi, 
Is it this summer that his contract expires? <laughs> yes, man. Yes. <laughs> Milik, uh, Mkhitaryan, Modric, Mustafi, Sergio Ramos, Marcus, Danny Rose, Lucas Vasquez, Wijnaldum, who's another player who's linked to Barcelona. Oh, Wijnaldum is another one. Yeah. Uh, none of these, mo- most of these players aren't actually free. Unless you're re-signing a player already that plays with your club. You know, like, somebody like uh, uh, Holland, whose contract doesn't end. It's not, it's not only that you have to pay his transfer fee. You have to pay Raiola fee, too. I don't, you know... Like, and we know that ain't cheap. Yeah, that ain't cheap. So, it's all these issues. Um something that'll tie so, into, I, yeah. I don't disagree with him. I think it will be an entertaining summer I just I, I just don't know the way he sold it you know it was like okay get ready because um, big boys coming to town oh, so hopefully for La Liga for Madrid and Barca Mbappé and Haaland do come this summer who knows um, we have to remember that Zidane himself would you take, would you take Neymar would you take Neymar now uh <laughs> I feel like we had like a long discussion about this in the summertime. I know, but that was ages ago. I know, but I mean, right the, dis- the discussion is with him is that he is one of the greatest attacking players I've seen in this generation. I would love to have him on the left flank. However, we also had a huge discussion about like, right. is he already yeah, yeah, yeah. past his peak because of his just getting battered and injured like constantly? And I that worries me a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Of course. Um, we have to remember that Zidane himself was a shitty source. Remember that time when he was like, Bale is not playing today because we're, he's on his way to China. And then like the next day, he like just stayed at Real Madrid for like <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> and he's still a Real Madrid player. By the way, this is the irony in all this, Diego. Like we mentioned all these names and Hazard. Bale, like from an analytical, statistical perspective, attacking output is outperforming every single one of Real Madrid's current players. In like just like with a short burst of like attacking play, is like and, wow. and we're not even talking about like Tottenham this attacking juggernaut, just as like this defensive team who just like gets a few chances every game and then he's he scores. Obviously, the context is he sometimes he plays Europa League games, but he's also played good against the bigger teams of late. Um, and obviously, we saw Odegaard yesterday. He scored two consecutive games now. Mm, I was in. I, I was at Derby. I mean, I saw uh, what's his name's goal. That was insane. <laughs> uh, oh, Lamella. Yeah, that was in, that was outrageous. Lamella. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, in, and, oh, oh, but I have to reiterate what what some Real Madrid fans will say. These players, mm. it's one thing to cut it at Arsenal, but mm. can can they cut it at a great club like Real Madrid? Mm. <laughs> Just cut it wherever you are. And that's what they're doing. So give, let's, let's see if they can cut it because right now nobody's cutting it here. Anyways. Um, La Selección. Wow, what a pod this has been so far. Yeah, let's go to La Selección because I wanted to touch upon the game. I imagine you beat that sub topic to death and plus you got the Champions League forward uh, to look forward to. But yeah. hey, uh, just my takeaway, what a way to grind out another result, man. Um Comes a weekly becomes a weekly question though. Was it a penalty or was it not? Wait, which one are we talking about? Because there was two two to discuss. Okay, I, I guess I'm referring to the the remake of Ramos's uh, takedown of of Mo. Oh, so the the potential uh, Elche penalty, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought that was a penalty. I was really confused as to why it wasn't. I mean, it turns out it worked out for them because they actually scored from the corner that where the foul wasn't called. I thought it was a penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, they called offside, which was a weird call because that it wasn't even offside. And so mm-hmm. that, to be to be quite honest, I was really confused about that play. It was just confusing because I thought it was a penalty mm-hmm. and then they just called offside or something. It was a good start from Thibaut as well. Yeah, it was. It was like a double save, I think, right? Or maybe it was one save, I can't remember. But um, yeah, I I thought that was a penalty. I was confused as to why it didn't call. It wasn't called. It worked out for them because they scored on an ensuing corner. Um, There was also the one where Ramos was pulled in the box, and that was controversial too. And that's the one where the Chiringuito reporters went to Twitter and were like, 
you know, pushing their thing that Real Madrid is always getting screwed by the referee. So I think but it probably that's the one out. I was referring to that that he's got he gets pulled down by his arm. Oh, that is the one you're referring to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was a penalty. Which, that's why I, the I thought there were two right, penalties yeah. that weren't called. One for Elche, one for Real Madrid. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I mean, another grind, uh, ground out result. Uh, non convincing, not a convincing performance, but Correct. the three points to stay within that title race. And, and really, at this point, I guess that's that's all you want, right? That's all you can... It's all you can hope for, really. I mean, no, I mean, like, what what is Zizou gonna do? Make this team play amazing football? I, I, I mean, no, that's that's clear, right? All we all, as Madridistas, all all I say we, gosh, uh, all you can hope for is is just to stay in the race, right? Yeah, it doesn't sound very fun. I mean, last season's title run wasn't very fun, if we're being quite honest. Like, in the list of right. like Real Madrid titles that I was like over the moon celebrating that ranks pretty low of like yeah. I if I it might rank dead last from all the La Liga titles that I've watched it from Real Madrid probably this was the most that was the least celebratory maybe that's the mood of covid and what's going on in the world and stuff like that but but also it was just the most unconvincing uh and so defensively focused which is fine I'm not against okay. good defense obviously um, but from an mm-hmm. attacking perspective, there wasn't much to get excited about. If it kind of goes this way this season, uh, I guess I'll be happy. But I certainly it's not exciting. And I don't think Real Madrid will win the title anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, our prediction of Atletico drop some winning points. the title, is it? how do you feel about right. that right now? Because they dropped two points again this weekend. Yeah, I mean, you know, I... I... I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm, my optimism keeps increasing by the week. Obviously, I have to see what we do tonight against uh, Wisca. And uh, before you start huffing and puffing and uh, assuming the, the three points will land uh, over at the Camp no, uh even you, you have to admit that Barca had, have had its ups and downs and its irregular performances. And every time we come off, of, uh, off the back of a good performance, we kind of take a dip again, right? It's kind of like... Um, nah, come on. It's, it's, uh, it's you don't have to you don't volatile. have to have a good performance like, uh, against Wesco. You just have to show up and just kick the, some balls around. Sure, but well, you know it's it's the performance have been so volatile, like the the cryptocurrency markets that you know you don't know what to expect uh, sometimes. And even if it is just getting those three points in an ugly way, well, we only need to look at Cadiz to see uh, that that's not always the case, right? Uh, this team does sometimes go up against a very closed opposition where they lack ideas, creativity, motivation, God knows what, but uh, they don't come away with the three points. It's been like that all, all season. Um, so I don't know what to expect tonight. I'm hopeful, obviously. I think we can close, close the gap to four points. And if we do... Man, I'm 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 very excited. I have to say, I I am very optimistic. The the most I have been all season, Kian. This is the most optimistic I've been all season, and it's coming off of a, a, a Champions League elimination. So, <laughs> we'll see. Um, I you know it's you're still six points back. If you if you win tonight, it's only three. Is that did I get that right, or is it is it less? Let me. No, four, four. We're we're uh, we're seven points behind now. Okay, so if you win, it's four points back. I mean that's uh, yeah. and you have to play them. Right, we still need to play them. Yeah, at the come no. Um, obviously, the classical as well. Still, uh, I don't know about um, Atletico's schedule, but you know we still need to go through uh, Real Sociedad, which is actually next week. And uh, I think though, I remember looking at the calendars briefly and looking at, at ours more favorable, as opposed to those the calendars of uh, Real Madrid and, and Atletico. Yeah. Um, let's uh, just quickly talk about La Selección, and then we can. I think we can wrap it up. Yeah. There. Um, wow, this has been this is this is this has gone by like in a sneeze. Yeah, this because we talk quick. we talk an hour about like the littlest things. Like we Gee, go into too much yes. micro detail. I think, which is fine. True. true. Um, I don't know if this. So it's a, it's a surprising list. It's full of surprises. This one. Most most Luis Enrique selections are full of surprises. I feel like every time mm. he puts out a squad, I'm like, oh, that's a like. If this was, let's say, if this was Del Bosque, what would the start? What would the squad be? It would be like, 
it would be like Sergio Ramos. He'd probably still be calling Xavi out of retirement. Iniesta <laughs> would get a run. Busquets would definitely Xavi Alonso. There. Yeah, Xavi Alonso, Davi Villa would still be around. Um, so this is a good... Do all right. It's a good... Uh, I like... I like. Sometimes I feel like he goes a little bit too extreme with like forcing the new names and the, and the, and the young players. <laughs> but it's... Uh, You're not talking about Robert Sanchez, are you? Well, so we have... No, I mean, I don't I don't really have an opinion on that either way. He's the third goalkeeper, but um so the new names are him, Pedro Porro, who I think deserves it. Pedri, yeah, who deserves it. And Brian Hill who deserves it. Absolutely. Yes. And now yeah, Mar- no, I'm, yeah. I'm Go on, go on. Well, obviously just that Marcos Llorente who got his first selection last time, not this time, and um is still in the squad. He should he should be a starter, I think, at this point. He's just been unbelievable. Um, so it's a weird one because there's no real stars in this team. It's not like the generations have passed, but um, but it's good. And Oyar Thabal has been uh, so good, and like he, he, I think he's starting to cement his place. But oh, for sure, yeah, he's a starter. He's a starter. Yeah, um, he's a starter. Uh, you're asking for very good. So your star names, there. You see what Got I got it. There. I understand. Uh, I'm I'm a little bit surprised about Thiago. I have to say, um, mm. Thiago, who has not been a regular starter for Liverpool, is not neither impressed. I would say in this time there, Injuries. a little bit surprised, maybe. Sorry. Injuries. Injuries, but also perhaps maybe lack of 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 knowledge of the English game, needing more time to adjust. He's getting an awful lot of bad press, I feel, from colleagues um, or ex-colleagues, I should say, retired players and retired uh, uh, coaches. Uh, when I read articles about his name and, you know, the kind of press that's, that, that, that is being associated to him, it's not necessarily good. Um, so I was a little, bit, a little bit surprised to see his name in there. Not that I don't rate Thiago and certainly think that he's more at home in the uh, in the Spanish game, the Spanish national side, as opposed to um, a more physical league such as uh, uh, the Premier League. But uh, you know, we to just uh, expand on 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 what you said before about the surprises. You know, I thought that he would maybe have given room um, to. Yeah, to maybe a, a, another midfielder that would have pr- potentially stood out. Um, I mean, I'm putting myself on the spot now. I'm kind of going blank as to who could I, I could see, you know, filling Thiago's boots. Uh, but again, it was just a name that stood out to me that was a little bit surprising. Um, mm-hmm. I'm really happy for. Honestly, Robert Sanchez was news to me. As in, I, I didn't even know him. I, I didn't know of him. So. Um, you're gonna have to excuse me uh, for that. I was very happy to see Pedro Porro. Uh, I haven't really followed him that much ever since he moved to Portugal. I felt that he was wrongly done by in his time with Valladolid. He's always a player that I rated and particularly high, uh, and I've always had a bias towards him because I got to see him uh, in a practice session with Girona B when he was playing for Girona B, and I, I was sitting by the touchline and. He was whizzing by me just just constantly. And the man, the, the kid at that point, but the guy had literally thighs of the size of tree trunks. It was it was I was mesmerized by just how strong and fast this guy was. Hmm. And it was Girona B playing against uh, uh, the South Africa under 19s team. And he was just going to town over and over again and uh, ever since then i was like man th- this guy is going places he's he's he's, he's this guy's going to be somebody he was just, he was he was already owned excuse me by manchester city then he was out on loan for girona girona b then obviously he broke into the girona first team then moved to valladolid uh, where he just completely vanished i haven't really followed him much uh, uh, during his time with sporting but i guess i should have because he's been making waves there and i'm i'm extremely happy to see his progress lead him to be called up with spanish national side because um you know, anybody whose last name is Porro, which literally <laughs> translates as joint spliff, is, is, you know, I'm down with that dude and uh, I'm rooting for him. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I have a couple more thoughts on, on piggybacking what you said about Pedri Porro. I don't have a huge opinion on him and I haven't seen him play much. But from what I understand, he's played really well at Sporting. And I also understand he plays also good there in a very specific system. 
um, mm. as a wing back there. So I wonder how Luis Enrique will use him. And maybe he doesn't even see the field. Who knows? But um, so you had you had mentioned um, <clears throat> you had mentioned Thiago and what right. uh, you know. I suppose does he deserve it or not? So I my personal opinion of him, and I think you we no, not so much does he deserve. Just I was surprised, Ken. For I, sure, I don't want to sure. say that he doesn't deserve. No, no, for sure. And look, we all know like kind of form with your club and if you're playing or not if you're healthy or not that 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 does have an impact on their spanish national team selection i think that's part of the reason why isco hasn't really been called up consistently is because he just hasn't been on the field for real madrid so yeah he does not going to get called up with spain that's part of it anyway um but i'm of the of the opinion of tiago and i i think we talked about this a few months ago and you actually from what i remember you pushed back i'm not sure if you were in agreement with him but i think he's actually spain's best midfielder when healthy and quickly Mm. From a mm. technical perspective, from like an experience, composure standpoint, someone I really trust. Um, but I, but I think you have a valid point about like you know this specific circumstance. And you were thinking of midfield names who weren't there. The main one I think is Mikel Merino, who hasn't been called up. Ah, oh, Merino, one of my favorite. Yeah. Yes, um, good one. You could potentially. I mean, you could potentially start talking about players like Jean Jordan, who's had a really good season. Um, hmm. But, you know, yeah. So, um, the defense, the names in defense are interesting too. Like, uh, Pau Torres is injured. That's why he's not called up. But I don't understand. I've never understood the, the infatuation with Diego Llorente, for example. I don't hmm. know why he, hmm. like, what does he, I've never really liked his game at Real Sociedad. Um like somebody who hasn't been called up that could like as healthy as Hermoso. I think I'd rather have Hermoso than Diego Llorente. Um let's Hermoso's see. class. Yeah, Hermoso's quality for sure. Good. Um Jesus Navas wasn't called up. Any opinions there? Neither was Adama Traura, by the way. Well, I mean Navas is a regular. I, I don't know if if maybe for these this string of games uh, given his age, he's asked to rest, seeing as Sevilla is also going through, uh, you know, their decisive phase of the league. I don't know if that played any factor whatsoever. But, I mean, to, just to add on to the list of defense, uh, defensive players, you know, Mingueza, man. I, I think M- Mingueza would have done, uh, has done enough, to, and he's a young player as well, to maybe be tested uh, for the Spanish national side. I think he'll probably... He, I feel like Mingueza is inevitable, probably, um, mm, at mm. some point. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about this with the Spain squad. I don't remember what it was. Um, Brian Gil, a.k.a. the young Graf, as he's just known that, as. Just that he deserves it. It'll be interesting to see yeah. once Ansu Fati comes back, who will be dropped. Right. Because right now yeah. you have Ferran Torres, Oyarzabal, Dani Olmo, Brian Gil, Morata, probably. It'll probably be Brian Hill, to be honest. But uh, yeah, but I think his future good. also, yeah, yeah, yeah. His future looks very bright. And the way I don't know if you saw that video, Keon, where he received the news of of him being called up. No. For the uh, the absoluta, uh, he's basically training. He's on the training grounds of Abar, um, and one of the technical staff goes over to him and, and tells him to him, and he actually breaks down to tears. Awesome. He's a very yeah. likable kid. He is. Yeah. Very much so. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. I'm okay to wrap it up here. Because I got to upload mask, this cabrón. before the next one. Vale. Yeah. Uh, so we're back Friday over on patreon.com slash churros tactics. It was nice to have a non-Barcelona pod. Hey. Yeah, I know all our Barcelona fans know. would be upset about that. But, you know. By the way, by the way, mm-hmm. I like that you put out a poll. Yeah. But you know that that poll should have been retweeted, and it that was. we're never going to get the right. Was it? Yeah, it was retweeted by managing. Did you. Oh Go shit! Check. Okay. Yeah. What was the final tally? All right. All right. Well, here I'll tell you right now. The final tally, my friends, of the famous poll on who listens, what is the majority audience of churros y tacticas? Yeah. Is it Madridistas? Is it culés? Is it other? Uh, the suspense is killing me. 
as is this scrolling down Kian Sobani tweets. I have it here, ready. <laughs> you got it? Okay, go. Yeah. 59.3% Maridista, 36.1% Kule, and 4.6% other. Closer than okay. you thought, right? Closer than I thought, for now sure. Now we got to retweet it from a Barca, maybe Barca blog. Granada's going to retweet it too. <laughs> work, work your connect- I doubt work, it, but the Can you work your they, excellent they, connections they never... with them? <laughs> they love you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure that they, they'd love to do me that favor. Um, no, but the thing is that that is fair. I, I felt it fair for you to retweet from the managing yeah, Madrid and sure. your personal account because that's where the audience comes to listen to this pod. You know, I'm 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 minuscule compared to you two guys' accounts, so that's why obviously I retweeted it, but it's not going to have much of an impact. Whereas you 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 get the point. Well, did you retweet it? I did, of course, I'd retweet okay. it. All right, we got to go. Thanks, Diego. All right, boys. See you Friday over on well, patreon.com slash hey. churros y tacticas. See you Friday. Hopefully, I can do the intro and hopefully Atalanta can kick out Madrid so we can all focus on La Liga. All right, good luck, man. All right, take care. Thank you. Thank you.